we back. Season four, Comic Book Nation, your one-stop shop for all things geek culture. What's going on, everybody? Today, I'm your host, Kofi Outlaw, and with me are my co-host, Janelle Wheeler. Hello, hello. And Matthew Aguilar. What up, G-Funks? And we got a show for you today. We got something all across the board. Like I said, we are Sing your one-stop shop for all things geek culture over here, spun out of our uh, comicbook.com website home. And uh, we're going to go across a lot of uh, a lot of places today. So we have to talk about this Peacemaker finale. We have got to get into that first and foremost. We are. I'm going to do a quick a uh, quick review, spoiler-free review. No spoilers. Spoiler-free review of Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg's Uncharted movie. Then we're after the break. We are going to jump into all those big new movie trailers we got via the Super Bowl, and talk about you know now that we've had some time to digest, kind of look back at some of them and talk about what we're excited about. And Matt's got to get in his agenda, so we got a Power Rangers <laughs> update. <laughs> and we have to talk about this week's comics, of which there are some big things. So, a lot to do. Let's get started. Guys, Peacemaker. Let's start with you guys today, so I can take Ooh. a minute on mute to cough, mostly. Not because <laughs> not because I value your co-hosting, which I do. Wow. Which I do. Wow. I All absolutely right. do. Oh, but, I love uh, this. Because I love you guys. hurtful. No, I'd be, I love you guys co-hosting, but um, it is because I'm just going to take a minute and cough. But uh, <laughs> yeah, tell us what you thought. Janelle, let's start with you because yeah. we need some good exuberance. What did you think oh, about dude. the Peacemaker finale? Hit us. <sighs> Peacemaker finale. You guys, this was the conclusion that I needed all season long. I was waiting for more of the cow. I was waiting for some death. I was waiting for blood. I was waiting for, I don't know, scary moth things to try to convince me that they're not the bad guys, but wait, are they? I don't know. I'm still not sold. I'm, I don't know. There's just, it, it's great. I'm confused on like, I don't know if they're going to bring back the butterflies to season two, but we are getting a season two. So I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, yeah, it just, it hit me in all the right places. Is I hope that doesn't sound wrong. <laughs> I don't want to tell you how much of what you say here. It's just, I just want to throw the archer phrasing around to like most of what you say here. It's, uh, it's hilarious. I, I, I am the best for that. Yeah. But yeah, this was just a great, this is such a great finale. I will say James Gunn can do no wrong. I, I'm just he's my favorite and I've, I've kind of understood cause I've seen his movies and I've experienced his movies and they're some of my favorites, but now with this show, he has just sold me. Like he is my number one. He's my favorite. And if he's involved, I'm pretty much sold. Like I'm there at this point, he just nailed this and bravo to John Cena again. He won me over. This is not something I was he's not the biggest the fan. Curse, uh, the Bella's yeah. curse is gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Bella's curse is gone. I'm just, and there were so many standout characters. Like each, each character made me like love them, and that's really really cool because there wasn't just one that I clung to, and that's the reason why I watched the show. I really loved all of their stories. So heck of a job to the whole entire cast as well. Yeah, yeah, for real. All right, there you go. There's that exuberance that we paid <laughs> for. Thank you, Janelle. Um, Matt, you were the one who was the hardest sell. So let's go to your side. What did you think of the Peacemaker finale? Uh, so I will say, um, I was actually, uh, I was uh, so on the last show. Yeah, I got my episodes mixed up, and so I hadn't actually seen the, like the most current one. I was one behind. So then when I went to watch the finale, I went, "What the?" And so I was like, "Oh crap!" So then I <laughs> watched both back to back, the last two episodes. Um, and the show finally got me. I, I, I finally came around, like, on those last two episodes. Like, you know, I still have things here and there. Just, like, sometimes the tone of the show just, like, just doesn't click with me. But overall, like, I really cared about several of these characters. I, I really thought by the end they kind of all really started to come into their own, um, aside from, you know, the people we've lost <laughs> along the way. Uh, I felt bad for the cow. Uh, I felt really bad. Like I actually was like, they did a really good job of making a compelling argument to Peacemaker, I thought. Like it was actually one of the few times when like a bad is like 
the villain is trying to convince the hero and like most often it's like you know that that's that's not a good sell like they're never gonna go for that and like this one they made a i thought it was really compelling i thought they actually did a really good job of like he might turn like he might just you know he might just do that right and they were uh, so emotional with the cow like they were just like right they right and i was like oh my god they're killing the cow like i was very yeah yeah they played on those on those beats really well and you thought as you okay, chew well, the burger well you and you thought like <laughs> maybe the team dies and maybe we get into you know like you're kind of going through your head like well yeah, that no, could work yeah. and i thought they did a really good job with that and then ultimately he does do the great thing and the helmets oh my god okay my favorite scene in this in this whole thing was when eagly goes past the barn oh. with the helmet <laughs> Because it's just the way it's spaced out. Like, it's just the fact that, like, you think he's going to drop it before he gets to the barn. You're like, he's going to drop it. But it's the fact that it takes so long, and then he's out in the trees, and then he drops it. I thought you were going to say the torpedo. because The, that the was torpedo's great, moment. too. There's, there's a lot of really fun moments here. But, like, that eagerly one, I rewound it, and I laughed over like Cute. it was brand new. Uh, so there was, there was a lot. I really thought by the end of this, I'm to the point where like, I'm actually excited to see them come back. Um, you know, this wasn't like, again, I still have things of like tone and whatever that sometimes just kind of take me out of it. But overall, I thought these last two episodes were really good. good. Oh, we won over Matt. Yeah, yes. round of applause. Even Matt got ah, won over by hallelujah. Peacemaker. James Gunn, you did your job. This cynical <laughs> bastard, it's hard to get any emotions out of him. But uh, Wow, yes. I am not emotional at all. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to help you out here. But all right. Yes, I mean, it's no secret. I mean, I love Peacemaker. I, I think, I really do think, and I, we did a whole episode at the beginning of the year about who was going to have the more successful year, Marvel of DC. And we weren't trying to be inflammatory, if you go back and listen to it. We were actually just kind of breaking down what each company and studio is doing over the year and how we think the results could be. And I said in my portion of the DC portion that I thought that DC and Warner Brothers could be really successful about this year, really synchronizing this whole multi-platform thing in a way that even Marvel still kind of feels like, it feels, feels like Marvel's hesitant on some of these TV series to really fully kind of commit stuff sometimes. But I feel like Peacemaker is the first step of, showing us like what it looks like when DC films and TV series are really kind of in sync on like a deep level and how they feed into each other. And I think James Gunn set down a really good blueprint for that. And just seeing who Peacemaker was in the Suicide Squad now, because if you have gone back and watched it, it's much more interesting once you know so much more about him. And the events of that movie, of course, feed into this so obviously. And what they do at the finale, and we're going to get to spoilers in a minute, that arguably really does affect back into the movie side of things is is was really surprising yeah on several levels so uh yeah so i think this is a good blueprint for how you can sync these sides of the franchise really well and in not just a mickey way but like in a deeply compelling kind of character way and so uh yeah i think it was a good win for dc and i'm really and it very much brought the most validity i think to hbo max as kind of like a an imprint for dc than any other thing we've had so far so yeah good time to be gap that back girl movie right so matt's so excited for that i am so happy but uh all right um i don't know if today rich is out today so i don't know if we loaded it up uh nick if we have a spoiler warning for peacemaker spoiler. we can yeah there you go he's on it nick floyd Ready. everybody wow bravo today's nick guest floyd. producer nick floyd on the on the boards lightning fast um yeah so we're gonna talk full spoilers now for peacemaker obviously because this finale's out the series is done i mean if you guys haven't been watching this i mean what have we been doing here for weeks telling you about <laughs> so we did our job. Now we're going to talk spoilers. So spoiler alert for Peacemaker because we're going in. So, yeah, first thing first, I volunteered to forego sleep and watch this for comicbook.com in the middle of the night and, and get us planned out and see if there was anything big. And, of course, you know, I sat up in my seat like that Leonardo DiCaprio meme from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when we got to the end of Peacemaker and leave it to James Gunn. So let's just break this whole thing down. Final spoiler warning. So. 
Peacemaker and them, they they do the blood, sweat, and tears of stopping the butterflies, killing the cow, however you want to feel about that. And they're leaving the battlefield. And who shows up late but the Justice League? I, oh, my God. It's Zack Snyder's Justice League characters um, in that. I mean, clearly that iteration from the Snyderverse. And you get these silhouettes of Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Aquaman. And then you get the like the added surprise that you're like, because you're like, okay, well, this is just like a funny James Gunn joke because he's like, Priest Maker's yelling at these, you know, CGI <laughs> silhouettes. He's like, ah, oh, you want to come here? And then they're just going to walk by. But no, Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller's flat, uh, Aquaman and Flash, respectively, are in the scene. And they do a James Gunn style just joke about joking back and forth about Aquaman screwing fish, right? And Barry actually confirms it and gets like cursed out by Aquaman. So hilarious cameo by James Gunn, like big thing pull off. Even if you didn't get the whole Justice League, who cares? Like that was, you mean, you know, monumentous just to get Momoa to take an Aquaman like screwing fish joke and be in the scene for that. Like <laughs> and have Barry like confirm it, like be like, but it's true. You know, it was just, I can't believe that he got them. I can't believe that. DC Warner Brothers signed off on this for two characters who both have movies coming up. Uh, this is some weird viral promotion that I've never seen before, but kudos again to James Gunn for uh, innovating. And uh, yeah, I mean, th this was nuts, right? Like, so just what did you guys think of this cameo? And would you, I mean, some people are mad about it. Like some people are what? legit mad. I did yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. Why? I mean, because the internet's mad about everything. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, well, can I just say this? I'll start with this. I didn't even need it, right? I was already sold. I already loved the show. I was super pumped with the ending. Like, everything was awesome. I didn't need it. And then when I got that, it's like finishing a delicious meal that you're just, like, loving. And then someone's like, here, I'm going to give you a free creme brulee to go along with this. And I was just pumped. Like, so pumped. Just the silhouettes alone was so rewarding. And then when they gave us those moments, like it's just, first of all, these actors are awesome to do that. James Gunn is, can get anything done because he's James Gunn and everybody adores him, including us. So it's just well, like, let's just, I want to put a pin in what you just said, because yeah. you just said the perfect thing to kind of segue into. I'm all about the segues now. <laughs> yes, he can get anything done. James Gunn has done so well for both Marvel and DC now that he literally has each of them shooting stuff for the other. <laughs> so a little behind the scenes, and you can find us on comicbook.com DC, but J to get that Justice League scene done, Jace James Gunn only got Momoa at first. And Momoa was just like, yeah, he told him what he was going to do. And Momoa was like, yeah, I'm game. Like, you know, uh, you know, he was just in there. Oh, so he had I Momoa, know. but I think... I don't think I don't, I'm not sure if Momo and, and Miller were together together, like in the scene. Yeah, like, I don't think, I think they were. They weren't. They had to get Miller. He just found out James Gunn found out that Ezra Miller like loves James Gunn movies. And so he reached out and got to him like, like, you know, could you shoot this? I think Ezra Miller was in the UK doing the flash or wherever they're shooting Guardians three. Yeah. And they were like, well, yeah, we'll let, let him come over and you can shoot this thing for Peacemaker. But he got Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 3 production team to shoot that scene and put to put Ezra Miller in that scene. So that scene is in part sh shot by Marvel. Don't also. you love to hear that? Yeah. So James like, geeks out here can come together yeah. and unite and be cool for the cause of <laughs> yeah. making good content. I don't even like, know what sweater he. I don't know if he knows what, what sweaters about. he's wearing every day. He's like, who am I? Wait, who's here? Uh, <laughs> you guys, you got the camera though, right? Like, we're gonna shoot this thing. <laughs> And that was a uh, payback because the actor who plays Mern, it has a major role in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Um, and so to get him that role, James Gunn shot his screen test for Marvel while making Peacemaker. So DC shot that actor's screen test. So then he went and was like, well, let's get some payback. And so they shot Ezra Miller's cameo well, on the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 set. sides of that. Yeah. Well done. So crazy, right? So the man and really can't get anything wins, done. We all win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, Janelle. Yes. Couldn't have said it better. We can all win together. Um, yeah, yeah. Just smash to, all those romantic comedies out of the park and just make it all superhero content. I'm just kidding. But people have comments, so let's just nail some of this stuff. Okay. Because Janelle, I want you to go back because you were doing such a good, good, good run there. But um, 
Yes, uh, just some of the obvious points. Yes, there had to be silhouettes. Henry Cavill, Superman. We don't like DC. Yeah, no not one gonna, knows. Yeah, no, no one knows, and DC's not answering that question in a Peacemaker <laughs> cameo, right? Yeah. Uh, Gal Gadot has been filming, promoting Death in the Nile, having a baby, doing all kinds of She's other busy. stuff. She's busy. Busy, right? busy, busy, busy. Exactly. Um, this was a willing commitment from two actors who wanted to be in it. So to make the full Justice League, they had to do some silhouettes. Why isn't Batman there again? Because Batman, if you haven't heard James Gunn tell you, now I know more about that story he was saying about just to make the Batman joke he made or something like that. Like, oh. Was, like, mm -hmm. was like pulling teeth with, DC is with so Warner protective. Brothers. Yeah, we and, figured that out. But I think it was a larger conversation about what he wanted to do with Batman. I wonder right. if Batman was one of those silhouettes at one point before he got, they're like, fool, we got the, the <laughs> Batman coming out like weeks <laughs> later. No. Like out. we got like, Keaton showing up and stuff. Yeah. We can't be mm -hmm. giving away all the yeah. secrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So because they knew it would be a big thing, but who whose Batman is it? Like, blah, blah, blah. like no, they're not stepping <laughs> on that. And Ray Fisher knew what he was getting into the moment he he yeah, nobly stepped out. And he's yeah. be the first to tell you like he knows his days a cyborg. Him and that Miami Dolphins coach both know the deal. Like they're like you know they're they're wow, good days really are done. Brian Flores reference. <laughs> yeah, Brian Flores reference. So he knows. I mean, He's hey, right. hey. Sometimes that's reality for some of us. God, we know no. the deal. <laughs> Stand up and do what's right. You ain't gonna have a job. So cyborg isn't there. So that's that. Okay. I mean, and that's just the things you got to live by. And there's interviews we have up from James Gunn saying that. So. Janelle, Peacemaker, greatest superhero TV series of all time. Or are you still sticking oh. with the Marvel stuff? Oh, no, no. I can't do that. I can't do that. Not with WandaVision and Loki. We had a spoiler. C Cunningly was in the comments. We had like 14 spoiler warnings and a scroll that yeah. scrolled. What you, that yeah. scrolled <laughs> so long, it scrolled what? all the way out. We yeah, we don't. There it is again. Warning. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, wait, so, Kofi, is it yours? What's that? Is, is it, it your favorite, favorite TV? Yeah, you asked the question. Is yeah. Live action? Uh, sure. It's yeah, just like, so uh, different. It's so different than like the serious tone of WandaVision. Like it's so hard to put those. It may be of, of these wow. new streaming of these new connected universe series. Like it may be. Ooh, yeah. We should do that. We should rank our top five favorite. Yeah, we're gonna have superhero to have superhero TV soon. shows. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah that'd be All fun. Right, so I won't give mine. <laughs> All I right. mean, I'm not right. I have content. to think about this really hard. Yeah, I got to go to the mattresses and go down. We'll, like, right. come back. But yeah, the so, boy's uh, definitely in one of mine. Okay, let's finish this part up by uh, just addressing, because I said there are major changes that it does. So we got this Justice League appearance, but mm. the end of this, sh of this season also has Danielle Brooks's character, Amanda Waller's daughter, seemingly possibly put an end to our Suicide Squad franchise. Do you think that will be the case? Do you think DC is done making Suicide Squad movies and they're kind of moving <sighs> the canon past that? Because it seems like it's going to be hard to still pull off once, you know, your whole putting bombs in people's heads scheme is exposed to the public. Do I? Okay, so I think those are two different. Do I think they're done making Suicide Squad movies? Maybe. But I don't think it has anything to do with that reveal. Like, I No, that, I would think the, that... That re reveal would be servicing a decision that had already been made. Right, but like yeah. that that premise though has been flipped over and over with like people knowing and like the league knows and like at one point the league knew where the Suicide Squad was and couldn't do anything about it, right? Like that premise has been flipped so many times even if Waller, like everyone knows who Waller is and where she is, she still finds a way to like do screwed up stuff. So like I think it can still, regardless of that ending, it can still be open-ended if they want to do that idea at some point. I just don't know with how the last one performed wrongly, by the way, because that movie was fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the Suicide Squad. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think they might be done for a minute. Yeah. But I mean, the whole the, the Suicide Squad is always going to be an asterisk, like everything HBO Max did that year, because I mean, the box office was like abysmal, but it's just like, I hope so. I mean, I hope it's viewed as that. It's just, but if you listen to like a lot of, like if you watch a lot of film pundits and stuff, yeah, they know, it's kind of like taking down. that as Bible, like as gospel, like, oh no, this performed really badly, but it's like, I don't know, you know, people. Yeah, but I mean, like, that that's what I was going to say. Like, I think that the success of Peacemaker really that's puts that. that into question, right? Like how many people just jumped into Peacemaker without having any connection or going back and seeing the Suicide Squad, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. yeah. Like I, 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 this has owned like the nat, like the zeitgeist for its run. So I think HBO Max might end up being a little bit more wily and smart than people give credit for because. Wily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to argue, oh, the box office, it didn't. I mean, clearly it failed, but it's like, did it? Because that stuff lives forever on streaming as right. a block of content. Agreed. No, I agree. With how you much are they now it. losing? And even if people did jump into Peacemaker, it, it doesn't lose anything for you now to have a block that's like, hey, here's the Gunverse, here's <laughs> the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. You liked one of these, you'll probably like the other. And like, people will begin to do Man, so. This over show, time, you know, this show made. Me I mean, Birds of Prey has been like quietly. Oh, kind yeah. of creeping up again like that's a different you, you know, know what this thing. show made me just kind of so much it made me want a a james gunn justice like dark it made me want oh, that, so bad. that would be so oh man because oh, like oh, after oh. seeing this show and like some of, one of those things that's like as he goes i'm like oh man you would <laughs> like he detective chimp in his hands fate like constantine like zatanna like that group etrigan like that group of people in gun's hands yeah, oh no, it would be great. Oh. But that's one of those things that's so perfect that I feel like we're going to say it, and this has happened in my career a couple times now, like where you're so perfect, you come up and then the Inception spin, like top starts spinning, Hollywood gets on it, and then it gets synced up, and then you get your hopes up, but then it all falls apart because something stupid happens because it's so perfect and so easy and so simple <laughs> to do, and then Hollywood screws it up, and then your heart's broken. <laughs> But maybe that's just me. Sinister Hellions would also be good. David Streams, yes. Oh, yeah. God. Oh yeah. Oh, right. hell we, gotta move. we gotta yeah, move. We gotta move. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, Nick, let's get ready. I'm gonna do a short spoiler-free, meaning no spoilers, review no spoilers. of Uncharted. So, when did you see it? I dragged my butt out into the freezing cold rain last night. Oh at God. Like Ten o'clock and. <laughs> went to see this movie so you love our listeners i do I, I felt like i owed it to you just guys just to you know be in on this conversation because i know <laughs> how many of you and i don't think i was wrong my instincts weren't wrong because that theater was unusually packed for like oh wow uh, oh yeah people came out i i came out when i was going in the seven thirty shows were coming out and yo testament to tom holland bro you had a flock of tennessee Middle to high school, it, no, I would say, I mean, man, kids all you look young to me. So high school, obviously, aged girls like flooding out of a theater, and all the hallway was a buzz with was how well good their boy Tom looked and how well he did, and, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, well, you got so this lot. And you know, yeah. those girls have never played video games in their lives. No, some of the, I don't know that anymore, Janelle Wheeler. You better be careful out here. I'm not trying to get canceled. The gamer girl cult will come for me. Uh, I do not know that. They might be better at Uncharted than I have ever been. So <laughs> some of them are hardcore. But um, yeah, so he had the hallways. I mean, Uncharted's doing, I mean, it made 3.4 million last night. So it's off to a good start and people are behind this. I mean, America, I feel like America's behind this. It's Tom Holland, it's Mark America. Wahlberg. Like, yeah, you know, that's like England and America are behind this. So you got this. I think he'll be all right. Which is a good thing because Uncharted is a movie and it has people in it. <laughs> and that's my review. Sorry. Now, um, that's what? my review. I would give Uncharted a solid uh in all seriousness, but it is a movie, has people in it. Oh my god. Kofi Outlaw. Oh uh god. comic book nation. But um <laughs> it, in all seriousness, I would give it a, about a three out of five. And I would say that it's not at all one of the worst video game movies I've ever seen. Um obviously a lot of that has to do with just kind of the genre Being propelled <laughs> the low yeah. bar of the genre <laughs> the low bar of the genre the fact oh my we're running my <laughs> nick running my scroll okay um the fact that it has i mean it has mark Wahlberg and tom holland and some other really talented actors and actresses kind of running through it and kind of having good banter and ruben fleischer is a really kind of competent director and not bad at all in kind of makes this for set pieces like really exciting and there is an indiana jones vibe to it that has the action adventure and makes it feel like you know what nathan drake was in at least in spirit in the games which is kind of this death defying crazy action because the games but it's also weird because the games were made to feel like action movies and now we're making an action movie made on a game that's made to feel like an action movie i feel like i'm going to be watching my own youtube watching my own youtube really soon it's like that wolverine meme where he's like looking at a picture 
and then yeah. the picture of him <laughs> looking at a picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, but that's neither here nor there. But um, it, it's it's all very competent, you know what I mean? And it's all very, like, there. But, again, at there's just something, time, something about Sully it that just feels – feel like Sully? Like, I didn't play the games that crazy, and so I'm not attached to Sully. But Mark Wahlberg, so I can say as somebody only – half in the foot of that that he just feels like a very funny kind of rascally character in this like he is very good and i'll tell you what his take is you tell me how much it syncs up to what you expect from this his take on sully is very like he's a bastard but he's also like very always like i'm the victim and like hey man like i'm just trying to help you like you know da -da 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 -da, you know and something's mm -hmm. like going on yeah. Yeah. but he's also very much like kind of a <laughs> rascally bastard who's always looking out for himself right that and, and a little bit of the other before is like spot on. Not so much the, it was always my, you know, like not so much the martyrdom, but yeah. the, other, the other stuff. Yeah. No, but I mean, the martyrdom, like if the martyrdom is just his cover though, he's just like always like, you know, explaining away why he's being a bastard, you know, like, why did you like, cause that's what it is with him. Holland's constantly like, it's like kind of a weird catch me if you can in reverse, like Holland's constantly just like catching up to him after like, you know, shit, Sully's run off with a thing and done something. She's like, what's your deal? And he's just like, hey, man, I had to get out of here. You know how the life is. Like, I got to get paid, you know? And it's just kind of like that. So the real, I mean, the real scene stealers, I mean, Mark Wahlberg is okay, uh, silly, but uh, Sophia Ali as Chloe is really good. Okay. She does a really good job. And on the villain side, Tati Gabrielle, who was in uh, U season three and has been in some other stuff as Braddock is, is really good. And she's a scene stealer in it. So... You know, she's she's done a good job. So those two ladies actually do help bolster things down a bit. And Chloe's kind of banter with Sully and, and Nathan is actually is actually pretty pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So no uh well no, that'll be spoiler. So no. Okay, never mind. Don't ask me any of the uh, I know I, did. I, I don't know, myself. bro. This I wasn't like my myself. thing. Yeah. I, I skipped I, just to let you know I skipped PS3. I was an Xbox person back then. So just that should tell you everything you need to know. I went for like a weekend and played one of the games. They come out on the PS4, you know. Yeah, Tom Holland is is Tom Holland. You know what I mean? Like he's got kind of that Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher thing feel in this a little bit. And I get it; it's like a younger Nathan Drake, but still, he can do a lot of those acrobatics, and he is swole in this. So, ladies, enjoy. Um, Tom is both muscular and flexible. So there you go. So all in all, like I said, though, it is just kind of paint by the numbers, ultimately. That's what it feels like. It's just kind of a generic action movie um, with some kind of spotlights of, you know, talented banter and chemistry, but not too much chemistry. And like, it's a weird thing. And again, all of these COVID productions feel kind of weird to me. There's like a weird, I don't want to say sadness, but a hollowness, but the actors, I feel like it's hard for the actors at certain points to feel like they're having fun doing this. And I feel like that comes through and it's weird because there's an uneven mismatch, like points where they were having fun. And Tom Holland, if you want to watch uh Brandon Davis sat down with interviews with Tom Holland and Ruben Fleischer and all of them. And they'll tell you like, there were scenes like the party scene, there's this big party scene uh, that they have. And that was supposed to be like 10 times bigger than it's just like a couple people in a bunch of CGI. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and it feels that way. It feels and like it feels that way. And and the poor actors, it feels that way. So there's this weird sense of just like hollowness and sadness. And and that's not just this movie. There's a lot of productions that feel like that. And that's why I feel like something like Peacemaker was such a gem because it felt like James Gunn had just like a kind of crew. And even though he had limited places to go, limited to work with, he still kind of infused it with a lot of liveliness and fun and made it fun. And I think that was even if we were to sit back and that would be a bigger story about how you made that fun during this really kind of challenging, scary time. But uh, things like Uncharted, yeah, it just feels like there's a soul piece missing here. Didn't just get go back and play yet. the games. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, it, it would be good for, I mean, the spectacle and just the kind of the cargo scene, uh, the plane scene and the aerials and all that stuff is well done and, and looks great. And there are other big set pieces it does get a little crazy by the end. By the end, I was like falling asleep with my eyes open because you know when you like seen a Michael Bay scene that goes on too long. Yeah. Yeah. By the end, they're just doing some just like a set piece that is just so big and crazy and over the top that I was just like, uh, ah, I can't even like I'm glazing over a little bit. But oh, that's not that's just me. So other people might you know love their action porn. So that's Uncharted. Woo
I hope I helped somebody. All right. <laughs> We're going to take a break because when we get back, we got to talk about a whole bunch of Super Bowl trailers Ooh. and, yeah, comics. So we got a lot to do. Let's get to it. Break time. We back. All right. Comic Book Nation, your one-stop shop for all things geek culture. We are back. We just broke down the Peacemaker finale and the Uncharted movie starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. So we are moving on now to the Super Bowl. Moving on up, moving on. So the Bengals blew their own dreams in the last minute, but uh, we're not here to do a hey, Rams! Uh, psychological <laughs> check on the city of Cincinnati right now. Super we Bowl are sporting. here to talk about what we here and the geek sphere all show up to the super bowl to see them trailers though so let's talk about the trailers at the super bowl this year and we're just going to keep it to the ones obviously that are most relevant to us and so we have a stacked order here so we are going to go yeah well, i mean we have a hierarchy this is this is america baby we gotta we gotta rate things so we got a hierarchy <laughs> here and uh we're gonna start just because it was the shorter one and uh probably the shorter conversation and uh Jim Viscardi, if you're out here and this is your time to shine, we are going to talk Ooh. about the Moon Knight trailer. Yeah, buddies. So, so good. Look at oh, look at Kaji right behind him. Yeah, we're going to be watching these. If you're watching this on video, we'll be watching some of these trailers as we're talking. If you're just listening to the podcast via download, uh, thank you. And this is good incentive to also watch. So check also, it out. Also, I cannot remember. So because um, there was a lot of stuff coming out. Uh the oh look at that shot <laughs> oh so good okay so uh the thing is the coolest thing was actually even in that trailer because then like an image came out of mr knight and yeah that to me was like that's what that trailer needed at the end of like just well that, that was a deep shot. cut i think they're still just showing people that moon knight's like a scary batman uh, superhero okay. moon um, knight is a deep cut you dude. start like, like as a whole <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, like, but, Mr. Like, but, Knight is as just as much a deep cut as anything else in that damn trailer. Seeing him in the suit and everything, people would have too many questions. I get why they saved it, and it still had the added effect because Jim Viscardi made it a one-man PR success. Because I mean, yeah, but I'm that saying like viral, that was the but, biggest uh, thing for me. Is oh, it was me too. You saw what I posted. I didn't want to give Jim his flowers on this <laughs> at all. But once I saw that they were actually going with Mr. Knight, I was like, okay, fine. Like, oh, now I have to like give this thing a chance and really kind of go in positive so you know congratulations moon knight but uh yeah um although i just think it's hypocrisy that uh book of boba fett gets nailed on a spin shot but moon knight's cape doing its own moon hey, shape hey hey gets a pass he is a moon <laughs> hero man <laughs> he has moon shape man. like chris it Deckard's, oh, anyway can't you be working through them fabrics no, like, to be fair, i did not give I'm anyone so a hard neutral time here spinning. I yeah. thought the spin was cool, so I yeah. don't stand on it. I know. I'm just being a heel. Uh, Janelle, what did you think of Moon Knight? I am kind of curious. I mean, I, I definition of me is more content, and I had like an obsession with Egyptian pharaohs and things like oh, that as a yeah. kid. I literally have like a King Tut book as a coffee table book. So all of this just really excites me personally. It just hits me in the right places, but I keep saying that. Why do I keep saying that? 
uh, I think we know what you need to do with your Friday night, but that's not for this show. Okay? Oh this my god, we are going to get more content though on a shirt at some point. We got it. Yes. Like, that's a, oh that's yes. Yeah, anyway, but, also, yeah. also need to be careful with that one because a lot of industries could put that out there. So uh, let's chill <laughs> with that. But uh, anyway, continue, Janelle. But yeah, just I, I really enjoyed it. I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, I only have like a, a very small amount of comic book knowledge on Moon Knight. And I just it feels like I'm getting the picture of mental illness and also just like worrying about this character, but also ready to see him just rock it out and get super aggressive. And um, yeah, it looks dark and and eerie, which I think it's it's really exciting to see that in the MCU stuff. And yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah, man, stoked. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. I still I saw the comment. I still am also a little iffy on the costume. I I will I will okay. wait to see it in action, like fully, like when we're actually like seeing it from scene to scene to scene, and not just like cut up stuff mm -hmm. and really see if that thing likes. You know, I was never a, the biggest fan of that version of the costume from the comics, so. Uh, you know, I am, I do understand some of the stuff I've seen online and, and even in our comments, I, I get it. I'm kind of there with you, but I am hyped. I'm hyped. I love the 90 spawn movie and I'm going to love this. All right, let's move on <laughs> to Janelle. Let's go to you. Janelle, your fave of the lineup was next. Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness, which was also, I mean, this was my, I think everybody's Ooh. hands down big trailer of, of the big game. Oh, great, man. I, I don't even know what to say. It's perfection. I, I like, I just cannot get over how awesome this is in so many ways. There's my only thing that I'm worried about is like, are there going to be so many cameos that I'm going to not get as much strange as I want? But if I'm getting more stranges, does that <laughs> count against that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, Phrasing. I'm, gosh, I'm just so excited. True. This is insane. I actually did a live reaction to my first watch through of this on oh, YouTube. Oh, nice. So that was, I was very proud of myself. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a, a, an actual reaction video. <laughs> and like, I was just speechless, honestly, I, because I love, I really liked What If. And I do feel like you're going to want to watch What If before this if you haven't checked it out yet already. And I think the payoff will be really, really nice because if there's been a few like references to what if one of the things that blew me away was the moment where you actually see like an animated crack uh, in the multiverse where you can kind of see like literally like an animated movie. Like that's some Space Jam stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just shocked or shocked that they even touched that. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's obviously the, there are very obvious moments to freak out on, but there are also really subtle moments that are just like jarring and crazy and really interesting and exciting. So yes, this is going to be spectacular. It comes out like two days before my birthday. Oh, thank you, Marvel <laughs> for sending me the birthday present. <laughs> and yeah, it's just awesome. What'd you guys think? <laughs> Um, I mean, I told you this was like my favorite, uh, phase zero, our cousin podcast did a big breakdown of this and came up with some really interesting things. Um, just some things I would love to address. Yes, we are getting this weird. It looks like multi Marvel multiverse Illuminati, which was of course highlighted by Patrick Stewart's voice in the trailer, who we can presume is playing at least some variant or variant of Charles Xavier from the X-Men movies. Uh, probably not the new Charles Xavier, obviously, for the MCU. We know how these things are kind of going now, but we'll have like this nice head nod to Patrick Stewart as being part of the multiverse Illuminati. All kinds of rumors about Tom Cruise and those Ultron bot things we see in there and the superior Iron Man being part of this story. Um, that person in the lit up armor, guys, that is not Tom Cruise. That no is way. clearly a person that looks to be of African-American background. And the popular yes. theory that I love, that I've heard, is that one of these Illuminati members will be Iron Lad. So we could see Jonathan Majors or mm. a different actor as a younger Jonathan Majors playing Iron Lad, being part of that kind of Illuminati from the multiverse because he's a Kang variant. He would know about all that. Um, and him fighting Wanda is, is her kill, you know, destroying the Illuminati for forcing her life to be one way versus a different way. You know what I mean? And kind I of super think it's Monica or Rambo for sure, because she's like what, her and Wanda have this like bond, you know, like, uh, why wouldn't she come through to like 
help her. I'm or... placing my money on this is how we get Iron Lad because everybody's been kind of <sighs> wondering about that. And so like I'm placing my money on this is how okay. Iron Lad. So the so the the lit up armor shot where they're going through the wall, well, you say that's Iron Lad. Yeah. Okay. Cuz I've seen the I'm still I don't know. I can yeah. understand a bunch like I've seen Superior Iron Man, I've seen Monica as Captain Marvel. I mean, I um, want to see more Monica I've Rambo. seen I've seen all those. So I, they're all interesting uh theories but yeah continue i'm just curious yeah i mean this illuminati is going to get murked though right like we can all agree with that and, <laughs> and i think like yeah so i think this is how we're going to get iron Lad in that's just my theory so cool. yeah and so yeah i mean i also love the tvs i actually like the tv spot of this more than i like the actual trailer to be fun wow. because the tv okay. spot is the only one where you saw like zombie wanda they didn't put that in the trailer if you go back and watch it's only in the tv spot from the super bowl that tells you to go watch the trailer that you see like zombie Wanda kick open the door oh. and some other stuff. And I was just strange. excited for the Captain Carter shield. There was like a, yeah, there was a, <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of thing on that poster, right? Like the oh, this, glass. There's yeah. a, there's a Captain Carter. People thinking they see Deadpool. In zombie one. strange like, looks yeah. insane with the arms, the skeleton arms. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. the, the thing that really, okay. Well, two things. One, America Chavez. I'm very excited. I'm very yeah. happy. Uh, that she, she looks, looks like, like her punching the hole. Yeah, you know, we're gonna get the star, going. and she's gonna stomp like all that stuff. I'm gonna eat that up with a spoon. But I was actually because one of my biggest criticisms of WandaVision is that when we've talked about it on the show previous times, like there's no consequences, right, for like mm -hmm. what what the horrid thing that Wanda kind of did, understanding where it came from, but still it was bad, right? So the line in this is amazing. When she's talking to Strange and she's like, you do this thing and like mess up the multiverse and all this, but you fix it and you're lauded as a as a hero. And I am villainized for, for all this. And when she's like, is that fair? I was like, that's amazing. Because if we explore that, like Doctor Strange has been as bad, if not a little worse yep. <laughs> than she has as far as like his choices in what he's doing and manipulating things. And so like, I love that. Like I want that to be explored. And I think that's really interesting. So that was actually the scene that like oh, yeah. really, that line like, is split in society in. down the middle right now. I Ooh. was like, Oh my God, but that's so, that, that's what I've wanted them to address, stands. you know? And that also leads us into some very, interesting things for strange because like one of those big things in the books was like the cost of magic and they talk about that in the mcu but they don't really they haven't really delved into that of like what magic costs and the price of each thing if they would go there and that's how we this is how we kind of get there that would be amazing because that's some really interesting story stuff in the book so that i was that whole little sequence i was like yes yes give me that all day i want a whole movie of that all right Doctor Strange, we sold. I can't wait for me to get here. Oh my gosh. Uh, so so the next thing is we're just gonna real quick touch on is they we you guys got to see our live reaction to the DC <laughs> yeah. 2022 uh <laughs> reel that I didn't know was a whole trailer last week until we started watching. <laughs> so you got to see my live like live live <laughs> reaction. Great. And if you haven't seen great. it, you can go to comicbooks.com and see yeah, comic it. Yeah, comicbooks.com. <laughs> but uh it came out during the Super Bowl and they've been replaying it. I saw it in theaters last night when I went to see Uncharted and it, it was again good. I mean, DC's just like, look, we're gonna just advertise this all in one, and you know that's not a bad strategy. That was actually it, it worked out pretty well. It was mm -hmm. just enough tease to make everything look awesome, and you know with no holes in it, and you know remind you, hey, this whole content block is out here this week, this year. Oh, look so, at Aquaman! Yeah, Aquaman looking cool, <laughs> and they chose all some great shots. So yeah, this was yeah. Uh, this was good stuff, right? Oh so. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot in there and like, you know, we just watched it really quick one time through, but there is absolutely so much you can deep dive on this. If you just keep watching it, which is really fun. Uh, and it just, they're, they're definitely building the hype. Like Look crazy. That. Oh, yeah. I am so hyped for black Adam and I could not have cared less about that movie. Me too. I did ago. not. Me <laughs> too. Was no, not black Adam. Adam. I mean, black Adam just looks like it's going to be an old school, just like good. Time. Oh man. Yeah. That looks so like fun. even, and I don't mean this, please rock. Don't hunt me down. I mean this in the best way possible. <laughs> <laughs> just like a really fun, well done 2000s comic book movie in in kind of a way. I mean, I know it's going to be part of the DCEU, but just like that, that fun kind of, even if it's a formula, like it's just going to be a good time. So I really just want to mm -hmm. see Black Adam. All right. 
And Hawkman, they did Hawkman, right? Uh, the next one is, of course, Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power. Power. Yeah, so That's Lord of the Rings is getting a prequel series. And, um, you know, I don't care about all the Easter eggs of it all. Like, I'm just approaching this thing as, like, a new thing set in the same, same universe. It's much easier to do. I don't need yep. any crossovers or anything. I don't need to see a Smeagol origin or some crap. Like, But Maybe. the one thing that's hooking me is just a premise, right? I want to see what this world was like when everybody had the rings of power and knowing that this one object is out there that's going to lead to all this disaster. Because it's going to be interesting to see because, I mean, it plays on the power dynamics of this entire world, these different races, and them trying to all get together. And we know it doesn't go so hot. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what that dynamic was like when the rings of power, all like when they, when they were all kind of active and out there, right? And yeah. what it's made these kingdoms like and how they fought and all that stuff. It's going to make the world, you know, for lack of a better term, so much better, like more alive and full and this whole Tolkien world. I, I'm going to be excited for that. It's interesting so, um, to approach it as like a TV show instead yeah. of just movies. But, yeah. I mean, I saw what they do. People are talking about the effects in the trailer and things like that, but I know what they did with game of Thrones and there's still time before this comes out guys. Like renderings can get better. And I, yeah. I'm going to always know that I'm watching a TV show and like, I'm going to have that standard for it. So like, yeah. After showing what um, Amazon did with just making me love the Jack Reacher franchise. Yeah. Like, Amazon, right? Yeah. Amazon's done a, a real good. And I'm mad that they canceled I Know What You Did Last Summer. I would have kept that. Yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, but yeah. we do have uh, Diabolical. We have The Boys yeah. coming. We have yeah. Invincible. Like, we got – they they got a pretty stacked lineup yeah, kind of on the simmer. They know how to make some good genre. So, like, yeah, I'm looking forward to Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. I just love the conversations – Lord of the Rings starts because like, I don't know if you've ever been around for like a hardcore fandom conversation and <laughs> oh, anything, God. right? We have it all the time in comics and stuff, but like <laughs> it, I, there was one in the, in our office chat when like this trailer came out and it just brought up all this, like the original trilogy conversations of this movie sucked and this was oh this yeah was oh great. stop i had put that away <laughs> yeah no it, it was no, so jim, jim viscardi and I, this is rare that i ever stumped with jim viscardi but yes the two towers you, you is, sided with him that's what i'm saying i ever stumped with him like it's rare you guys but, are uh, so cute no so the two towers is better than the fellowship of the ring don't try to bro i went to all of those midnight showings and i dragged my then new girlfriend now wife like to all of them and she could tell you with fire in her eyes, Sam Jackson gift style, like which ones she remembers being enjoying and which ones she was just like, who is this kid and how much do I like him? Um, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So Two Towers was a hit. Like that was wow. a hit for everybody. Nobody fell asleep oh, to that. Like God. the Gollum stuff, Helm's Deep, Crossing the Bog, just some of the shots. And that. I mean, man, don't even try to hit me with Fellowship of the Ring and its height differentials. Our office is crazy. By the way, this is exactly <laughs> why I brought it up. <laughs> because i wanted that it's oh great, now our though. comments are going off you know, i wanted it man. you're an antagonist you're a bad antagonist all right we're gonna <laughs> get through more of these uh nope trailer jordan peele's latest oh that um, looks awesome oh yeah. god i don't know what is going on can someone please is this aliens i don't is it, it aliens like it's, gonna, it's like black signs is what i've been calling it oh my god it's so and it, frightening and this is third film it's it is that point in in it so like you know this is when Shyamalan made signs this is his first thing but uh so far it's just kiki palmer kind of being a one-woman show so i mean she's hilarious yeah but i love that because like i cannot wait to see how what his reaction is to everything like he I, He's going to be gritty and like. Who, Daniel Kaluuya? Yeah. I love that she's just like wildin' and he is just this almost like he's like country and quiet. Yeah, he's and, a cowboy. He's like, yeah. yeah. I'm really cowboy. excited to see his performance. Hang yeah. On. Stephen Yoon's young. Stephen Yoon's in this. Yeah. What? You didn't see the shot of Glenn in this? No. There's a shot of him looking at the sky. He runs like a different horse ranch show or rodeo oh show. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sold. Yeah, he's in that. <laughs> Glenn is up in this. Yeah, there's some good people in this. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it. I mean, we're going, Jordan Peele is going full Shyamalan. And just like, I mean, he's getting, he's on the same kind of weird traje trajectory. Uh, his first thing was a hit, like Sixth Sense. Then his second one was Divisive, which was Us, you know. And now this right. one's coming out. Just, wow, that's a really sign. good point. I never even thought of that. Yeah, yeah that's and, a, they're mirroring each other a lot. Yeah, hopefully that's not too closely. But uh, this is his signs. Oh, right? that so, was him. 
Yeah, that was Glenn. Yeah. Oh my God, he's so cute in his little cowboy oh, that hat. Creepy. That <laughs> spot. That spot. My favorite spot, which I've rewound like a couple times, it froze like trying to see what it is. Is when he's getting out of the car, and he looks up and you see the balloon. Oh my God. Or whatever. Right. Yeah. And yes. It's like the you it's can't like tell eyeball. if it's like an eye or like a storm or yeah. a portal. Who knows? I I am. I'm oh, cool. yeah. so I creepy. I hate scary movies, but I have to watch this. I'm like so intrigued. Yeah. Yep. So right. we're going to, I want to see this. So Nope is going to be good. Jordan Peele did it again, at least with trailers. Uh, let's get something a little more light and fun because we're going to move on. But uh, Sonic 2. Yeah, baby. Oh, came my and, uh, Yeah. Sonic was part of the Super Bowl. And we're getting some Knuckle series, right? Yeah. yeah Knuckles. Just, oh, that was announced by, uh, was that us? Was that a Paramount? Did we announce that? I don't know if we uh, like comic book announced it, but yes. No, but, Paramount. Uh, yeah, we had the big. We had a lot of announcements from Paramount, but uh, yeah, you got to hand too. it to Knuckles with the Winter Soldier reference. That was awesome. Uh, Knuckles looks so cool. Or like man. I guess Sonic called Sexy Knuckles voice Winter Knuckles. Soldier. That was so cool. Sexy voice Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> what I, what, 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 uh, Knuckles totally is the Winter Soldier of this, though. Oh yeah, totally. It's so cool. Absolutely. I love. I was really excited to see that. And I love. Yeah. Sonic. No, I, I mean. Yeah, this, I mean, just from the Knuckles character alone, Sonic 2 looks like it's hype. And Sonic's pretty fun. It's growing on me a lot. We we yeah. built a show on Sonic, so. That's uh, probably going to be on our, uh, I saw another recommendation of, like, the worst and best gaming movies mm. uh, in the comments. That'd be another good one for us to do. That I would imagine yeah. Sonic would be on many of the best lists. That. All right, so yeah. let's talk about uh, a final one we're going to have some video for here is uh, Lightyear, the Buzz Lightyear story. I mean, this is, yeah, this trailer was great, and I am in it to win it. I I didn't think you could do something like this, like a spinoff prequel about the character who made the Buzz Lightyear toy, but Chris, I mean, like, I'm mixing up my Chris's right now. Uh, Chris Evans looks like he's going to be great in this, and it just looks like a really good story. I, I'm still kind of searching for what the deeper thing that's going to break my heart like pixar messages yeah. about it but uh just as a fantasy adventure movie this looks great like i can't wait God, to take it's my son and daughter to see this yeah. are they really gonna try to do that on this one that sucks what break, <laughs> break heart? your heart yeah oh, of course of course they, they can't do a movie without breaking your heart <laughs> yeah i just thought this was gonna be more like a fun I don't know. When I when this first came out I thought we were gonna watch like some kids sit down in front of a TV and then like turn it on and like watch the oh, show. I see, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I mean, this is, if anything happens to the robot cat, like we're oh all going to, so I mean, <laughs> robot yeah. kitty. I love you guys. Our listeners. I love you guys. You know, this show, we, we got the right crew for here. The only <laughs> thing reaction out of everybody watching our show, robot cat going to die. <laughs> Yeah, poor robot cat. Oh, I it's love so robot cute. cat, but no, it's yeah. a robot, so it can be fixed. I mean, like the little Save boy in me, chip. this is like everything I ever played with action figures, and now it, it makes that connection between toys and like your imagination, and yeah, that's what awesome. I think is really brilliant about it. So, yeah, and that'd be an interesting twist. We find out there's all like some kid's imagination or something like that. Yeah. That's, like, but that's Lego movie. All right, so say, don't Bob Newhart it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> we don't, we don't rep that. So uh, Netflix also had a trailer out uh, that we saw that showed its content that looks uh, pretty good, pretty good. Nothing like, I mean, nothing too crazy, but uh, check that out if you want. The Lost City. I mean, Lost City actually looks fun, right? It like, does. I can't hate America's Sweetheart, so uh, Sandra Bullock, or America's Honk Hard, uh, Channing Tatum, and them together is just instant it looks. Money. It looks like it a very, cute. like... Um, What's the word I was looking for? It, it it just looks like a very like unharmful, like very just like happy go lucky, good date night movie, romantic yeah. com. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I'm yeah. down for it. Santa yeah, Bullard, me too. Has yeah. So, I mean, I mean, Channing board. Tatum has cracked the code this year. He's like, look, man, I'm doing two movies. Okay, I'm doing one with Sandra Bullock, and I'm doing one with the dog, and that's it. <laughs> and I want to see both of those. Money. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And he's like, I'm yeah. taking all the money. He's like, I already stripped down for everybody and danced. Like now, I just need to do. Like these kind of, <laughs> but it's like incredibly rare for Sandra Bullock to pair with a male lead and it not be money. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. like it's just like in, in any type of these movies, like it's just you know Ryan Reynolds, Keanu Reeves, uh, oh god, uh, Pratt, not Pratt, Chris Pratt, uh, the oh my god, Benjamin from Law and Order and Catwoman. I'm blanking on his name, <laughs> but like it doesn't matter. Like whoever is opposite her. She's yeah. gonna make shine. So I'm. Yeah, I mean, that's what that. Sandra Bullock's been doing, making these men look good and tall, like since 1994, <laughs> bro. Like that's what she does. That's why. Good, 
I mean, she does it, and she does it, you know, without any exasperation. She just is a pro. Mm-hmm. Gotta love, gotta love SB. But I love uh, yeah, just yeah. say SB. Yeah, Hello. SB. <laughs> we love you, SB. Oh, we love you, I love SB. SB. Yeah. Oh, the heat, God. come on, the heat. Benjamin Brad, thank Benjamin you. Brad, thank Brad. you. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I couldn't. My brain seized up. I was I like, it's not Pratt. It's not Pratt anyway. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, and she also makes co, you know, female co host or uh, yeah, she, co-host. she makes anyone, yeah, look. Robin, I mean, I, she's just the best, she's a Scotty Pippen of movies, baby. All mm-hmm. right, so I don't know how say. we got there. So, uh, yeah, so the last one is uh, Jurassic World Dominion, and you got to see us break that down on the last show. Looks good, touches the spectacular, heart. yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a big, big movie adventure. So, that is uh, Super Bowl movie trailers. I mean, clearly, we had our favorites and uh, we just let you know what they were. So, listen back if you missed pretty it. much. Matt, mm-hmm. get into your agenda. Speaking of Netflix, <laughs> we got Netflix. They, I love announced, this. they finally, so like Netflix has the rights now uh, to stream like all the Power Rangers Dino Fury episodes uh, going forward. And even the last season are on Netflix. So, now season two, they finally, we've been waiting for a premiere date. They revealed a trailer, and then they also revealed a premiere date. It's going to be March 3rd. Now, we don't know uh, if it's going to be, like, the entire season at once. Typically, last time they did it, like, in two parts, which is kind of, like, mimics, like, how Nickelodeon used to kind of do it. Um, but I'm I'm excited. I loved last time when we just got a bunch of episodes. I got to binge them all. Uh, Dino Fury is, like, one of my favorite seasons uh, in, a, in a, like, it's, it's actually stacking up to be one of the better seasons like overall i mean this franchise has been going for over 25 years so it's really cool to see this cast and welcomed and everything and i'm hyped i'm hyped that we're back it's like right around the corner march 3rd is not very far away so i am super stoked look for uh coverage on on the site and everything but uh i'm excited clearly clearly i'm excited all right thank you matt well keep on talking because now we're going into this week's comics. comics comics Um, awesome. So yeah, let's start with, uh, something completely different from Power Rangers. (laughs) Let's go right into, uh, 10 Lives Wolverine number three. Um, as we left off, and this is one of the ones I actually really love when we get to, uh, continue with series. Me too. Um, Yeah. It's just like, it helps me a lot at a time. Uh, (laughs) so I, I'm very excited, uh, to get into 10 Lives of Wolverine. Uh, this one very much is a, like, it picks up right where the last one left off as far as like, there's three. There's two different battles going on, and this one very much feels like, for the most part, an extension of all of those. Like, they don't really take on another, the next chapter. It's kind of just continuing that phase that was started in that second issue. Um, so we're still, like, where Wolverine's trying to help, uh, you know, Xavier's uh, ancestor on the boat, which I love that that whole sequence and everything is really fun. Um, and then we also have him where he's trying to, there's a, the, my favorite scene in the story, which by the way, spoilers incoming for these comics. Um, my favorite thing in this issue is actually the part where he's talking to Gene and he's talking to Charles. Cause like, he's been very isolated, you know, he's kind of wants just to like be left alone so he can do his job and things. And then he reaches out to them because like Omega Red, if he succeeds in killing, you know, his wife, then Dakin doesn't exist and that removes him. So he's trying to figure out ways because he knows he's going to have to kill and all that. So anyway, I, uh, I, I don't know. I was very, uh, I was very, that was a very interesting take and it was emotional and it it drew stuff out. And then the last part of the issue is a really good hook for, for next issue. Um, And and I hope next issue kind of moves us out of these two particular scenarios and moves us into like the next real beat of this story. But I really like this issue. What'd you guys think? I think you are effing up by not talking about the real thing that we need what to talk I do? about. <laughs> <laughs> what is Amazon doing in my comicsology? Just lurked in and has just lurked into comics. Oh yeah, no. And yeah. ruined everything. Yeah, no. Wait, what? Bezos. So uh, uh so comicsology. So Amazon purchased comicsology a while back. Yeah. But they hadn't migrated their sites yet. So Comixology was still a separate website and has separate login and all this stuff. You could merge if you wanted to. You could actually log into their thing, but you didn't have to. As of like two days ago, they went, nope. Is that (laughs) why I didn't have issues? Because I read them early? Yes. So it was all one thing. And uh, it was all one. It was all one thing. So um, that is, you know. Like uh, so, we're that gonna also have to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, that was also jarring to me as well. But uh, yeah, no, I don't like it. 
I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> we got I the hoodie up and everything. Like it. It, it was very upset. Fun. It was very upset. Um, yes. But yeah, what did you guys good. think though of the issue? Um, I agree with the commenters. Uh, right now, I think lives is better than deaths. But I think it's because for me, I mean, first of all, the artwork is gorgeous and lives. Yeah, um, but uh, second of all, it's what we always say here. Like, it doesn't matter how deep and heady you get on things like Dakin and existence and time erasure and memory transfer. As long as the premise is like blessedly straightforward and simple and easy to grasp. Yeah. And that is in this one. And it's always edge of your seat because it's Wolverine being like not even a whole step, like maybe a half step ahead of this killer who is tracking him through time to kill this one target and can strike at him at any different point of his, you know, descendancy or, or his, or his uh, ancestry rather. Um, and so that is always so simple. It's just get, protect this guy from this killer who can show up in any body and any time, which is a freaky premise. And you gotta, you gotta protect him. And you got to protect him through all time. So it's heady, but it's also really simple. And so therefore it's really easy to engage and stay thrilled by. Whereas deaths is still kind of even just getting to the point yeah. of just third issue in going to maybe even justify its own title. Maybe like the, why is this called the 10 deaths of Wolverine? And like, what does that have to do with Moira running and all that? Like we're still so murky. So I, I think that lives has established itself really well while death is still kind of cloudy. And I'm, I'm interested to see what happens if we get the midpoint and this whole thing kind of switches and like it does lives run out of steam while death becomes really exciting. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a good point. Janelle, what do you think? Yeah. I, I'm grateful because I'm finally understanding like what's going on. <laughs> like it took me a while to kind of, wrap my head around it. So this is the first time I'm like, okay, this is what's happening. I'm understanding fully. So therefore I've been able to enjoy it more. And I think part of that is obviously the fact that we just keep reading this. And I do appreciate that we're like continuing on because it's giving me time to understand everything. Um, I like both. I really do lives and deaths and just for different reasons. Yeah. And I, appreciate each for what they are are there moments i don't again i'm kind of lost a little bit here and there yeah but i this isn't like i don't hate it and it's mutants so i'm just gonna take it as a win <laughs> right <laughs> I, I get it absolutely yeah uh, well and uh you know kind of continuing on the uh train of continuing actual books that we've been following uh nubia and the amazons number five uh, which, uh, again, spoilers coming in for these books. Um, if you've been reading, keeping up with the series, uh, and you can find, by the way, a deep dive on issue four and five uh, with Stephanie Williams on our website, if you want to, comicbook.com. Um, but uh, I love how they've been introducing, you know, the Well of Souls and uh, Doom's Door and things that kind of open up uh, the world of, of Themyscira and the Amazons, and they're introducing, they're using these things to introduce new characters. But one of the biggest things is that they've given like Medusa a complete, a real like emotional backstory, an arc. And so that's why when this fight hits, like it could very well be, and it's got some really cool parts of like Nubia just battling Medusa and all the things you would assume that would have, right? Like she's trying not to like let her look at her. So she has like, she has to fight with this helmet uh, that, you know, is covering her eyes, right? Like all that stuff that you would typically associate with Medusa. But there's a lot of stuff like underneath. And once they kind of, that battle has growth for both. And then you really get to see like how their battle impacts the island um after and there's like ripple effects and so it, all that stuff like the society parts of this book have been really interesting have been some of my favorites and so this is not just like a superhero battle but it's one that also affects all that other good stuff so uh, also this is very much a lead up straight into trial of the amazons which comes out next month um so it you know it's kind of like i'll say it's like a last page hook so like it i imagine it's not mandatory reading if you want to enjoy that i'm sure they will onboard you for trial as when that first issue comes out but if you are wanting to pick up all those things in the lead up this is an unimportant what i would say but uh what'd you guys think i did not get to read this one before comicsology shut the door <laughs> 
and I'm still <laughs> waiting for my access back. Oh <laughs> no, that's fair. Janelle, what do you think? Uh, yeah, you know, surprisingly, I wasn't moved by this one as much. I just felt disconnected from what was happening. I I think it's because I, too much time has passed since I read like the lead up to it. I, if it's been too long for me, so I was just kind of, I jumped in. I went, where where am I? Like I can't remember why we're dealing with Medusa, like all of, I just couldn't remember. Um, but I, I mean, I liked it. It is a little more cartoony and I've been reading so many like really like sexy, dark, like DC comics lately mm -hmm. that it almost felt like it, it felt like, like a kid's comic for me. Um, but I just, I didn't dislike it. I just kind of was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I feel like we all kind of have our favorite like Wonder Woman esque thing, and I love Yara, and I'm like really missing yeah, that. So yeah, it's hard for me. For to shame, past her. that wound will never heal. Yeah, you know, the good news DC, is y'all messed up not invested in. Oh, that. They, no, yeah. for sure. Uh, the good news is that Trial will have two Wonder Girl one shots um, as part of it. So okay, we'll get to see her. She will be a hopefully major factor in this event. Um, so that's. I'm hoping after that, maybe they relaunch her into some kind of series. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still very upset about that. Uh, and then moving, you you brought it up though too. Hey, I got perfect. some breaking news that you'll like, Matt. Oh, what? what? Oh. Our floor new series? Dark Hawk? No, no. <laughs> Cardiac. The cast of Martin is reuniting for what? a reunion special. <gasps> <laughs> oh my Airing God. Airing later this year for BET+. Plus. That's which I believe amazing. falls under our purview. Isn't that yeah. under, isn't that part of Paramount? Like, aren't we? Yes. Martin exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> the surviving cast of Martin will reunite for the first time in 30 years. Oof, you know, those are that, that, that Fresh crazy. Prince one was great. Yeah, Martin. All right. Oh, yeah, we gotta get all that, all that, all that juicy like spice. Because there's been so many like that show. Like the cast doesn't do like a ton of interviews. No, I said something else. Chino <laughs> doesn't do a ton of interviews. Uh, Chino uh, Arnold and uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Gina's. I, I can't think in the moment, but uh, yeah, no, I want to hear from them. I want to hear. Would, yeah, I'm excited. That's awesome. Who's, do we know who's the only one who's dead? Is Tommy right? Like Cole's still alive? Yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. Well. Do we know uh, when? Uh, they're fit. They're fit. Filming, it takes place on February 20th. It'll air later oh, this year. All right. Yes. Woo -hoo, Ooh, right all right. Back to uh, comics, though. All right. Well, let's move into our last <laughs> book of uh, the day. And we're going to talk about Batman the Night Number Two, which fittingly kind of Janelle kind of segued last in, right? Temptation of Bruce, baby. Uh, because uh, this book is, you know, very much in the black label fit. Uh, this is, you know, the first issue. I, I think we came in. I know, Kovey, I don't think you were as big a fan of that first issue. I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Okay. I didn't like um, the first issue but, at all. And so the second issue takes us out of Gotham, and we're in Paris, and it goes like a really completely different route than I thought we would be going from like the first issue to the second issue. But I really enjoyed it. We essentially see that Bruce had a had another mentor um, along the way. Um, and, uh, you know, he he he's still green in so many ways and he's trying to be this yes, he vigilante is. hero yes, and he uh is. yeah so there's a great their dynamic <laughs> is is excellent throughout um and then we get like some of the investigation side or whatever but it's really about those two and uh i don't know i i came away like i love this issue because it, it was also just something i didn't expect and i like the play on uh their characters and you know just the he keeps screwing up along the way and it's honestly really refreshing to see bruce <laughs> who's always known as like the dude who knows everything just kind of bumble his way through a lot of some a lot of this stuff um and have somebody else in that role and it ends in a very interesting place so i i i love this issue uh what'd you guys think i think it fit and knowing the established batman mythology about how he did his training and learned things this is like one of the, i mean this is almost star wars level like retconning that you know, Ducard wasn't actually his like first and and formative mentor. There was this other person, and how they connect that to Ducard mm -hmm. and all that stuff is is just this issue was is really well done. And talk about different ways to do Batman, but yeah, this is a. I know people are saying in the comments even now, like, oh, I don't want to watch this another Batman in his years of training or <laughs> becoming Batman story. 
but this one is actually good. Even if this was just a one shot, like I would yeah. love this. Like it is just such a good story. And this character, this woman he meets, this expert thief that he kind of meets is great, both in terms of his psychology mm -hmm. of how to become the ultimate crime fighter by becoming the ultimate criminal first, and then kind of like working backward from there. It, it makes sense. And like it is, I mean, in real law enforcement, that is how some people do it. I mean, that's why that Jordan Belfour guy is now like still successful and rich. It's like in the catch me if you everybody Leonardo DiCaprio plays in a biopic who was a scumbag. <laughs> eventually, you know, America turns into like, you know, the expert cop or or the person <laughs> who catches the people like that. Right. Um, you know, so it makes a lot of sense. And the woman, the character, she is just so good. And she's like, awesome. Yeah. And just how she, I mean, they need to get that Mrs. Robinson vibe real good. I, I was, I needed another comic to fan myself while I was, uh, <laughs> the rest of it. I was like, oh, I do declare. But um, yeah, just to like culminating in the end and just her line, she's just like, you know, you're a gem of a boy, but too young for my tastes and all of that. And then she's like, man, if I still have some I beer, know, I'd I break you off. I love that <laughs> moment when she yeah. goes in there. Also, just like, um, well, no. I, I'm that is some real up. French stuff, too, if you've ever been in the uh, <laughs> French romance. That is some French stuff right there. But anyway. <laughs> you know what um, you think. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I, I thought it was it was really exciting. I love seeing him in that state as well. Uh, he's just young and experienced, stubborn. But, uh, yeah, I – she stole that. She stole the show for me. I relate to her. I'm like, oh man, I would that. Yes, that's me. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah you I'm do. a little bit of a puma. Yeah, but wow. yeah, I, I am. <laughs> I do though. I love her. She's got fire. I would love to see like a whole series just with her. I, I'm oh. not gonna lie. That like, as after I read that, I went, uh, can we? Can we retcon that? Like, where yeah. is she at? Like, can we yeah. get something? Like, I, I don't need Ghostmaker. I mean, I like Ghostmaker, but I don't need Ghostmaker. I want her in something. Like, yeah. Just put her, yeah, put her in a series. I also think, like, Kofi was mentioning, too, how it informs stuff, because it's amazing what he's doing, what Chip Zdarsky is doing in continuity, because this is all mm. in continuity. So, yeah, wow. like, the fact that he's also informing, like, you see the very much the example of Selena, right you see oh, yeah, what that's he's what attracted were. to yeah yeah and yeah. where that probably started you know mm -hmm. like you see oh okay i can totally see why he fell in love with selena years later because yeah he's totally. already attracted oh, my to gosh. Yeah. Fetish, guys it was not a cat suit fetish. <laughs> right so yeah, I, right. I yeah i thought that was uh this is this is really good and i know um i like the first issue but i loved this issue so Me hoping oh, we continue it. in that direction uh, yeah. So that's comics, I think, because I think we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're about out of time. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Oedipal stuff in here, man. Poof. Uh, yeah, we're just going to say a quick mention. Uh, there's a new Iron Fist that Marvel there launched is. this week. And uh, you read that book and you can see maybe why this book is coming out. You know, it's it's a good book in and of itself. And the character is interesting in and of himself. But you also see why maybe Marvel's getting on this right about now. So, uh, hey guys, the remember these guys? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> the Marvel Netflix rights have reverted back to Disney. That was a big news story this week for us. The Marvel Netflix rights are going back to Disney, and Disney has not said what they're going to do with them yet uh, or how they would distribute those Marvel Netflix things. We don't know if they're going to be on Disney Plus, which seems like a little hardcore, or they'll be through Hulu and they'll make a Marvel block there. I don't know. But um, yeah, so one of the lingering problems is. Pretty much fans would take about take back everything into the MCU that we got with Marvel Netflix in terms of principal characters, except for Iron Fist, right? So pretty <laughs> <Yeah>, much. <laughs> what do you do about that? Well, this comic may answer a few of those questions. So check out the new Iron Fist from Marvel. It's getting right. good buzz. It's getting no, good it's, buzz. it's the reasons for it could be across a company line, but it's actually a good character. It's actually a more interesting mythology for Iron Fist. Agreed. Like a dragon's heart is bull crap. I'm sorry. I always thought that was stupid. Um, it doesn't fit with like so much of Marvel, but like <laughs> this sword, the shattered pieces, the ways you can play with that and spread the power around and do that. Like all of that stuff is interesting, right? And it's classic Marvel. It's like this character has pain, but power, right? So, like, Good stuff. That's a bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good deal. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm I'm a, I'm on board for it, but like, 
Yeah, we could see why this is happening now, and it could be very timely. So check that out. All right, that's it. Matt, you had some... Uh... Yeah, but we don't have time for all that. So all right. <laughs> so that's it. This was Comic Book Nation, and uh, we are on all your major podcast platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or tell any smart home device to play Comic Book Nation podcast, and then we'll get going for you. You can watch the show live on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook. If you miss it live, then the replay will be right there for you as soon as we're done. You can go back and listen to anything you missed. Follow us on Twitter at Comic Book Nation. We are not just there for the show. We are dropping hot content that, like, you know, because we are reporters. We do break a lot of stories. And so Comic Book Nation will also be a good destination if you want to get some of the latest stuff as it's breaking on your Twitter feed and none of the bull crap. We do that. So, you know, nicely filtered there. Plus, you also get Janelle stuff in, in like, things to invite and to, you know, stream with Janelle, <laughs> hang out. Oh, yeah. See that's what Matt's what, yeah. doing up to in his crazy agenda and whatever random thoughts I have to send out in the Twitterverse. It's all part of that feed, too. <laughs> so check that out. Otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Guys, we're getting awfully close to having to do a big Batman episode, and I'm excited. It has been Woo! a long time. So Let's go. Shout out to Nick, too, in the background. That's right. Nick. Killing Floyd, it today. Uh, killing it on the boards today. Thank you very much. And, uh, we hope Richard's getting some uh, fun R&R and &R doing something fun. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. Comic Book Nation. Oh, Jim comes in at the end. You weren't here for your Moon Knight <laughs> segment. Jim Viscardi, we had a whole Moon Knight set up for you. Uh, <laughs> next yeah. time. Bring yeah. him on. We didn't get the brand canceled today, Jim. We're okay. Comic Book Nation, maybe next week. See you later. Peace. Bye, Peace guys. <laughs>